Okay, so welcome everybody to uh, today's session. Um, we're here talking about the, the greening of the concert experience, uh, talking about uh, with uh, Richard Godina and Howard Ungerleiter uh, about how the touring market is changing. Um, all of you know Richard from, uh, from past webinars as well as, as the, uh, the technical editor of PLSN and also um, from his many books written about uh, touring and uh, entertainment applications uh, as well as his role as uh, ETCP uh, uh, trainer. Um, Howard Ungerleiter, many of you may know or certainly know um, the shows that he's done. Um, Howard has been the, um, the lighting designer for Rush, uh, for Van Halen. Uh, also, most recently, uh, you may have seen on Live Design uh, the feature story on the, uh, the Star Wars tour. Uh, Howard has been the, uh, the special effects designer for that. Uh, also has his own company, uh, Production Design International out of Toronto, uh, providing uh, laser technology and, and other applications for the touring industry. Um, you all know me from, from the past as the, uh, the moderator for these sessions. Um, and I, what I'd like to do at this point is go ahead and get this turned over to Richard and uh, let him get the session started. Richard, go ahead. Thank you, Kevin. It's really great to be here. I'm really excited about this particular webinar because my friend Howard Ungerleiter is one of the world's great LDs, and I think he's got a lot of really good things to say, and I can't wait to get this discussion underway. We're going to be talking a lot about making our technology or making better use of our technology, trying to raise the efficiency level and uh, make our productions as green as possible. And before, but before we get started, I want to make sure to thank Creative Stage Lighting for inviting us to do this, and also thank Howard Ungerleiter um, for taking the time to do this. Howard's a really, really busy guy, and to have him uh, spend an hour, hour and a half with us, I think that's uh, very um, admirable of him to do that, to set, set aside that time. So uh, today we're going to be talking a lot about different types of technologies. But one of the, the fastest growing technologies in the uh, green area, if you will, or greener area, is LEDs. And LEDs have followed Haight's law, which, which says that their brightness increases every 18 to 24 months. And that has held true for the last 45 years and continues to hold true today. It's just mind-blowing to think about where... We've, we've been with LEDs and how far we've come in a very, in a very, very short amount of time. And uh, at the same time, the cost of LEDs is dropping as well. So it's having a dramatic impact on the live event production industry. And up until pretty recently, you know, I knew that LEDs were getting brighter, but I wasn't, I wasn't completely convinced that they were there yet. I didn't think that they were quite bright enough. And then last January, I went to a Daughtry show, and I sat in the audience watching this Daughtry show, and I saw some LED fixtures that completely blew me away. Uh, they were some, L uh, some impression moving yoke LED fixtures, and they were very small. Um, they were, the rigging was very lightweight. There was hardly anything to them. Uh, and they were very close to some Mac 2K wash fixtures. And they were as bright or brighter than the Mac 2Ks. And at that point, I thought, okay, we're here. We've arrived. It's, it's now. The future is now. So, Howard, was there a moment for you where you realized that LEDs were, were going to be a viable product in concert touring? Well, in the beginning, I really didn't. But uh, the more I saw them uh, appearing... Starting from the very smallest uh, days of when when color kinetics first started, um, I knew that it was going to accelerate, and I think confirmation of that to me was when I started watching uh, truck lighting and, uh, and 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 the green lights on the street all of a sudden becoming LEDs. You knew that it was the technology is here and it's going to be uh, stepped up and uh, in its adolescent stage, ready to go and take off. Yeah, were you at LDI the first time Color Kinetics exhibited there? Oh, yes, I was. You remember that they had the little PAR-46 LEDs, and we all kind of laughed at them and look at them today. Isn't that incredible? I know, and I thought even more incredible with those little MR-16 replacements that you can program, you know, standalone programming built into that. 
Right, right. So we've come a long way in a relatively short amount of time. Um, now, there's a lot of other technologies that are emerging besides just LEDs. Of course, LEDs are a big part of it, but we also have a lot of developments in discharge lamp technology. The arc is getting shorter, so the collection efficiencies are getting better. There's something called a plasma source, which is this uh, small source in the center of the, of the picture. And then we uh, supposedly we have some high efficiency incandescence coming out. And then in, in the TV world and film world, they use a lot of fluorescent fixtures like the Kineflows, which are uh, T5 and T8 fluorescents that are really, really efficient as well to make good use of energy and put out a lot of light. So we're going to be talking a little bit about all of those technologies. But before we do, let's kind of set the benchmark. You know, the benchmark for quality of light is and has been the incandescent lamp. Howard, what is it about incandescent light that makes it such a, a unique and really good light? It's a balanced light source, Richard, and it, it has a texture to it that really very few lights have, and especially when you're looking at it, um, it has a very even um, skin tone uh, adaptability which is very hard when you step into the world of uh, 5600 and uh, or daylight but that's now rapidly changing and it's becoming the norm but incandescent lamps were something that uh, everyone was using especially back in theatrical presentations I mean the theater incandescent lamps still are used in the theater to this day, and uh, some, as I said, uh, some directors in the, in theater just insist on having uh, you know all incandescent lamps, and I I could understand why. Yeah, they certainly have unique quality about them, don't they? And and the other thing is that they're relatively inexpensive. You can get them just about anywhere, and the color rendering is the benchmark for that's the stand the standard the gold standard for the measurement of how well light renders color. So it, when we're talking about a color temperature of 3200K, uh, the CRI of incandescent is one